Nick Griffin this week was expelled from the BNP after 15 years as its leader. Um, and the reason given was that he was bringing about, as they put it, disunity. This is after he's not, no longer the leader and uh, he's now, they made him honorary president, which is, uh, which is just kind of like, uh, we can't afford anything nice because we're bankrupt now. So Nick Griffin, he's bringing about disunity in the BNP. And the fact that in his 15 years in charge, Nick, Griffin, uh, Nick Griffin's leadership of the BNP ended up spawning 27 splinter groups. Um, 27 different splinter groups, including the EDL, the BFP, the current one, the Britain First, uh, one called True Britain by uh, Andrews Bonds, which actually was, you know, back disbanded when they found out the fucking, uh, that acronym for it was TB. National Front is still going, you know. You know, you've got to give credit, but we should remember Nick Griffin. He's brought me many, many uh, great moments of muse and material. You know, he's the only man I can ever say who, who was so far to the right that even the left side of his face didn't work. <sighs> that poor glass eye who was always trying to escape, wasn't it? And you can make fun of Nick Griffin, and I will do now for about the next five minutes. But I just like, you know, there's, we should remember the man. We will always will remember him. But I want to turn, I will turn it serious eventually. You know what I'm like now. Nick Griffin. Now, apparently, here's one interesting fact about Nick Griffin. He read Mein Kampf when he was 14 years old. And apparently, according to him, every chapter, uh, it, it was all boring apart from the first chapter. And I actually, I, I think that's pretty much what I said when I read it. I read all of it and I thought, that is a sick, I, you know when your book's so boring, it, you realise you've read five pages and you can't remember anything. And, uh, you know, it's just, considering what um, the amount of horror and misery and carnage that book kind of sort of like and it was just it was rubbish right um but what 14 year old boy wants to what wants to read a book and particularly one with only one eye it's got to take him twice as long um anyway it, some of his other great moments uh he oh he was uh, he was the leader of the national front which um which is just the pre -B that's the sort of like beetles to the wings of the bmp and uh, he kind of came up with a new system in, in National Front called the Political Soldiers, which was basically laughable and stupid and made them sound like a bunch of wankers, really. And so in all fairness, he was fine. But he, he kind of got a little bit uh, in trouble when he went to... He, him and his him and the uh, Bryce president went to Libya because they wanted to do a deal with some oil money from Colonel Gaddafi. Now, you can't really... He, I, the fact that the man's back home saying, Ah, oh, Muslims, Muslims, Pino, want to come over here, kill you, chop your hands off, mince you up into a bun, pick you there, get, get the body of a newborn baby, stick it on their cock and use it as a condom to fuck their grandmother with it, and all this stuff, and he's going, Oh, you've got some oil, come over here, we'll do a deal. It just kind of shows how full of shit these people were. And Moma Gaddafi apparently liked him. I don't know who this speaks more highly of. Right? Um, in, uh, when it comes to the Holocaust, uh, he does, um, he's, he's what you would call um, a full Dusty. Um, yes, he's, a, he's got some strange views on the Holocaust. Uh, he wouldn't have any view because it didn't happen. The, the most interesting one was when he compared, he compared the official historical account of the Holocaust to the Flat Earth Society. So believing that, believing that uh, six million Jews were killed in gas chambers and death camps was apparently akin to believing the Earth was flat. Um, he, uh, he, when a, there was a, uh, an incident when a gay couple in a bread and breakfast in, in this country were denied service because the couple who owned it didn't want two raging queers in there rubbing their dicks on the, on the curtains and getting shit everywhere. So uh, they, were, they didn't uh, take their booking. And uh, this was taken to court. Uh, the, old, the, old, the old Christian couple lost. The gay men went in there, jizzed on everything. And uh, Nick Griffin decided it would be really funny to tweet out the address of these uh, these two gay guys, tweet out the address on Twitter, and uh, and tell them you know you're you're gonna get you're we're coming for you and uh, they're like oh yeah, so yeah that was a fun one. Um, in 2008, now I'm sure you've all heard of the Black History Month uh, in America. They have to have one for them. Uh, in America, they have a Black History Month, and uh, every year when it comes around a Black History Month, you will hear some some fucking chinless wonder you know, who's 
finally, the first original thought is that he waits for this every year and he goes, hey, hey, what, what, have you got a Black History Month? Why haven't you got a, a White History Month? And, um, because we, we need a month, right? Um, we need the rest to cram all ours in. But you'll get that every year. And it's like, why don't we, it's like when you have the music, uh, there's a, an award ceremony in this country called the Mobos. It's the Music of Black Origin Awards. And every year you'll get the, well, what about the music of white origin? We've got that already. It's called the Country and Music Awards, and that's it. There's nothing else. Unless there's having a white, uh, a white power punk band evening, there's bugger all left for us to conquer. Now, but in, but in 2008, in February of 2008, uh, it's a coincide with Black History Month, which uh, it is an American thing, we don't have it. Uh, Nick Griffin decided to launch the first ever annual White History Month. Um, it was weird, because when you went through the website, it really wasn't a White History Month, it was a history of who white people have massacred month. Um, in particular, you know, the Holocaust. It was a lot of stuff about that. He seemed to think that that was the most important part of white history, was the Holocaust, which is ironic, seeing as he claims it didn't fucking happen. Um, but the two, it, that was launched in 2008, and it, it has now been going for a total of one year. It didn't go any further. You know, they just... Political correctness gone mad. People wanted to. I don't know what you would... If, what did you celebrate in White History Month? I don't know. I'm trying to, I can't think of that one. Uh, a quick a Twitter account got hacked um, earlier this year. That was wonderful. Uh, my favourite one was just him... Uh, it was just him tweeting uh, out... But various BMP policies with links to you porn, and um, and the guy who did that was a legend, and he's braver than any fireman or anyone fighting in a war. And uh, but my favourite one was his question time appearance in two thousand nine. It was uh, it was perfectly set up, and the BBC knew what they were doing. They even took the trouble of getting as a guest on Question Time to sit next to Nick Griffin, a uh, black American uh, feminist. Um, whose name was probably something Nick Griffin shuddered in fear. And the best moment was when uh, Nick Griffin was being questioned about why Winston Churchill was the front man for the BNP in their website. And this woman pointed out that uh, uh, Winston Churchill's grandfather was uh, Native American, so by, the own, by their own sort of racial purity policies, uh, Winston Churchill would not have been allowed in the BNP. Um, which was just fantastic, and he's there shaking his head. Um, probably just because his eye fell out or something, but that was a, that was the the end of it. Um, now, but all that aside, all the silliness aside, you know, it's not all been fun and games because uh, it's actually been quite that, quite bad, really. Um, now, the fact is this: Nick, Nick Griffin shouldn't just be laughed at and seen as a loser. Um, you can do that any time, right? But there is one thing he did do. Uh, it took. It took an unfortunate huge amount of life to be lost for him to do it, but he did it. And I still think, to this day, so far, it's, when you look at how simple it was in respect to how much it impro- uh, the overall impact it had, um, I think it might be one of the most... It sums up politics more than anything. It's one of the shrewdest moves in politics I've ever seen. Because during the early 2000s, Nick Griffin's BMP was flagging a bit. Uh, Mainly due to the fact that it was very difficult for them to talk honestly and openly about their policies because the government had introduced a sort of uh, no discrimination, uh, an anti discrimination policy uh, that had to spread throughout all political parties. You couldn't be a political party and say anything overtly or blatantly uh, uh, that was uh, racist or prejudiced. So. What happens? Well, they're flagging the they're flagging in the polls, and then a load of Muslims uh, went into a London Underground station and blew themselves up. And that same, shortly after that, couple of months after, Nick Griffin, you know, shrewd genius mind that he was, said, "From now on, we don't say Asian, we don't say black, we don't say." Um, we don't say Pakistani. We're not even going to say. Im- we're not even really going to say immigration that much. Um, what we're going to say instead, we're going to say Muslim. We're going to say Islam. We're going to say Islamification. We're going to talk about mosques. We're going to talk about all those other things. We're going to talk about our Christian heritage, our values, and we're going to put that in there. And we're going to shut up about all the the blacks, the Pakistanis, and the Jews, which we have been. 
And he did. And not long after, they had two European... Uh, there are two seats in the European Parliament. Nick Griffin was in the European Parliament. Can you imagine the face of the poor bastard who ended up sitting next to them? And Nick Griffin's in the th- and they had, they were getting a million views in some a million views a million votes in some of the election. Now, that's politics right there. It sums it up in a nutshell. If you've it's about what you say and how you say it, and if you get it at the right time. That's all it took for Nick Griffin to turn the BNP around, was to change a couple of words. When something happens in South Central Los Angeles, nothing happens. It's just another nigga dead. 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 Thank you. Thank you. For many of you, today is the first day of school. The black people can read. He says, we don't want to go real elaborate with all these essays and dissertations and all this stuff, because the brother going to look at that and say, man, I ain't got time for that. I got to go see what I can do for myself. And for those of you in kindergarten or starting middle or high school, we're not American. We are people who formerly were Africans who were kidnapped and brought to America. So it's understandable if you're a little nervous. When I was young, we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. The rock was landed on us. You want to be a member of our military? We want all black men to be exempt from military service. Stay home from school. You can be rich and successful without any hard work. Your ticket to success is through rapping or basketball or being a reality TV star. You want to be a lawyer, nurse, or an architect? You're not going to be any of those things. This is what the Negro wants. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. God bless America.